Oh, hey. Uh, yeah, I'm looking for John Broida's contact. Who is John Broida? John Broida is the owner of Japanese Knife Imports. It's a knife shop located in Beverly Hills. When it comes to knives and knife sharpening, he's the most knowledgeable person I have ever met. His knife shop isn't just a shop. It's a place where cooks and chefs gather up and talk about knives, talk about food, and talk about life in general. John became the liaison for all these chefs and cooks and restaurants in and outside of the city. He has lovely wife and two adorable sons who also enjoys my YouTube videos. I'm really excited what they're gonna request me to make. John also has some message for all of us, so don't miss that at the end of the video. Let me call him now. Hey, John. Hey, Tetsu, what's up? How you doing? How's it been? Oddly, pretty much the, the same old thing. Uh, it's, it's a weird time. It feels like the world is turned upside down, and, and for so many people, life is uncertain right now. And for us, I think in the beginning, it was, it was very much that way, but bit by bit, we've got back to work, and uh, it's gotten busier and busier. So here we are, sharpening knives and shipping out knives, and talking to people about knives, just doing the same thing that we always do. You know, I started a YouTube channel, right? And I was, yeah, I was thinking maybe you have some idea what I should be cooking today. I'd really love to see you do ebichiri. Uh, it's one of my favorite dishes. Uh, my mother-in-law used to make it all the time in Japan, and it's one of the things I look forward to the most when I go back to Japan. We've really been enjoying your uh, YouTube channel a lot as a, as a family together. Uh, good luck, man. I hope, I hope it goes well. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care. Ebichiri. Put in English, shrimp, chili, is a Chinese dish created by Chinese chef in Japan back in the day. Although there are many Chinese restaurants in Japan that serve authentic Chinese dishes, Chinese food that are enjoyed at homes in Japan are oftentimes very different from that of authentic Chinese dishes. But trust me, this tastes really good. I mean, think of orange chicken. Not necessarily authentic, but we love it, right? So you can say ebichiri is like orange chicken for us in Japan. Let's start cooking. I have little less than a pound of shrimp here. Make sure you get shell on shrimp and peel them yourself. Because oftentimes, already peeled shrimps at grocery stores have lost the flavors in the process. Make a little incision on the back of the shrimp and pull the veins out. Ugh, don't want that in your food, do you? You know how these shrimp dishes in Chinese restaurants, they have this velvety coating on the surface. To replicate that, what I'm about to show you is super important. This requires a little bit of effort, but it's gonna pay off for sure. So please don't skip the step that I'm about to show you right now. Add good pinch of salt in your peeled shrimps and mix them really hard with your hand for about a minute until they become sticky. Then add three tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. Cornstarch is gonna scrub off dirty stuff off the shrimp, so mix them really well. See how dirty the water is getting? Now go to the sink and rinse them off until the water is crystal clear. Place all your shrimp on a paper towel and make sure you dry them out really, really good. This is important. Do not leave any moisture on your shrimp. When the shrimps are dry, put these back in the bowl, but make sure the bowl is dry also. We're going to season the shrimp with a heavy pinch of salt, ground pepper, and a tablespoon of sake. And mix them really hard with your fingers again. Keep on mixing for a good one minute until the shrimp starts becoming sticky again. Not a good way to put it, but if they look slimy, it's a good sign. Massage the shrimp with three tablespoons of cornstarch. Add egg white from one egg. Whip the egg white and shrimp with your fingers for about a minute until everything is mixed through. I know this is a lot of work and a lot of mixing, but there's one more step left. Add a tablespoon of vegetable oil and lightly fold it in. Let's keep this in the fridge for half an hour to make sure the slurry sets on the shrimp. Half an hour has passed. Now we're going to deep fry these shrimp. More like poach these guys in oil. What I mean by poaching shrimp in oil is that I'm going to cook these shrimp in very low temperature oil, around 280 degrees Fahrenheit. As the slurry on the surface of the shrimp cooks, it becomes like a velvet texture. 
depending on the size of the shrimp, cook for about a minute or two and pull them out. At this point, shrimps are only cooked about 80%. Do not overcook the shrimp. When they change in color and curled up a little bit, they're usually ready. Okay, so let's finish the dish. We're gonna go really fast. Heat up a tablespoon of vegetable oil and add a tablespoon of Chinese chili bean paste and saute it in the pan. By doing this, spiciness and aroma is gonna be first in the sauce. Now add two tablespoons of ketchup. Saute the ketchup also for the same reason. Add a teaspoon each of chopped ginger and chopped garlic and also a tablespoon of chopped green scallion. Saute them all together. Once fragrant, add a tablespoon of sake and half cup of chicken stock. If you don't have chicken stock, water is fine. Put all the shrimp back in the pan and cook for about a minute. Once all the shrimps are cooked through and absorb the flavor of the sauce, Turn up the heat and add a mixture of a tablespoon cornstarch and a tablespoon water. By having the heat turned off, you'll face less risk of having the sauce being clumpy. Now turn the heat back on and let's thicken up the sauce. Oh man, shrimps are glazing beautifully. Finish the dish with another tablespoon of chopped green scallions. There we have it, ABTD. Here you go, John, what do you think? Real deal, right? I'm pretty sure you're thinking right now, maybe I should come over to Tetsu's and join dinner tonight. Maybe you should. Da da da. This recipe might tip over to a little bit of on the challenging side. But if you feel like cooking at home and you want to make something really, really delicious, your effort is going to definitely pay off. I mean, look at this, man. You're going to wow whoever you're enjoying this with. Are you kidding me? Wow. Wait, don't go anywhere. John has some message for all of us. Hi, my name is Jonathan Broida from Japanese Knife Imports. We are a small kitchen knife store located in Beverly Hills, California, and we focus on high-end Japanese kitchen knives and getting them into the hands of people that are really using them. Uh, we've been doing this now for about 10 years and uh, slowly grown from out of our apartment into a little store in Venice to now the store that we're in in Beverly Hills. Now with COVID, unfortunately, it's, it's closed to the public, but we look forward to having people back in here. One of my favorite things about having this store is the kind of community that we've been able to be a part of and, and help build. Being a part of this restaurant community here in LA has been honestly the most satisfying part of what we've been doing for the last decade. It's it's amazing to see how people have grown. Of course, it's not all you know pretty as we've seen through the, the COVID pandemic. Uh, in, in many cases now, it's watching friends whose dreams have been crushed uh, or people who are out of work. But I'm, I'm hopeful that we can all work together and try and help each other out. And on the flip side, we will be maybe better for this or stronger for this uh, and, and that we'll be able to build back up in a way that is meaningful and helpful for our world, for our country, for our community, for our friends and family. Thanks, John. And thanks everybody for watching. And follow Japanese Nice Imports on Instagram. Bye till the next time.